I will never ask you, Senator, to handicap a political race uh, because uh, another uh, fact that comes out of the Newsmax cover story is that in 2010, when you ran for the Senate, you told your wife not to worry because you had less than a 10 percent <laughs> chance of winning. <laughs> Uh, and that's what I thought at the time, and I was surprised that there was a, you know, a lot of uh, unhappiness with the way things were going on, and uh, I think people were ready for something new. Well, maybe they're ready for something new again. Joining us now is the woman that Rand Paul said, hey, don't worry, I'm not going to win the Senate seat, 10 percent chance. Kelly Paul, author of True and Constant Friends, there it is on the screen. Um, I have it in my hand. Great to see you. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Uh, let, let's let's let's. Uh, so um, we'll get to the book in a second. So um, he told you there was a ten percent chance of him winning the Senate, and that's why you said, "Okay, go ahead, play play your game, right?" Actually, he did tell me that, but I didn't really believe him. You thought he'd win. I did yeah. from the beginning. I had a really strong feeling. And, and was it because of uh, who he is combined with what he said, uh, the, the need and the feeling that people want to change at the time, or he could do anything? You know, it was. A combination of events. Um, I think that he was right about the mood of the country, but also who he is. I mean, I, I'd seen people's reactions to him when he spoke. Um, I had friends and my brothers were texting me and calling me saying, wow, you know, you, really need, to, you need to let Rand yeah, do this. Yeah. And so I was like, all right, you know, uh, I knew that he, he was af affecting people. So. And, and do you believe the same holds true now, that he could become president of the United States? You know, I'm not quite as confident on this one, to tell you the truth. Um, you know, this is a huge, daunting undertaking. Sure. Um, I think there's no doubt that Rand is, is making a big difference in the Senate, and uh, he has a, a lot of good things to say and a lot of good ideas, so right, we'll see. We'll get back to Rand uh, a little bit later in the interview. The book. The book is very, very interesting. Um, you and your closest friends, mm -hmm. a, a handful of your closest friends, uh, you decided to ask them to, to document uh, a woman in their life who made a difference. Mm -hmm. And you did the same. Your, you chose your grandmother who came here from Ireland all alone when she was a little girl, right? N 19. Yeah. So well, she was a teenager. You, what gave you the idea to, to put this in a book and ask your friends to, to do this? Well, the inspiration, as you said, was, was my grandmother. And actually, politics. Uh, two years ago, I was asked to give a speech to a Republican women's group. And I decided I just didn't want to do the typical echo chamber politics. I wanted to talk about someone that embodied the American dream for me, and that's my grandmother. And uh, she had amazing optimism, incredible work ethic, very brave. I mean, leaving terrible poverty in Ireland yeah. and coming to this country at 19. So I wrote a speech about her, and people would come up to me afterwards, and the reactions were very similar. People, men and women, would start telling me stories about their grandmothers right. or someone in their right. life that had been like my grandmother or they'd want me to show them the purse or things that I talked about that she'd given me right. because she worked for very wealthy families and it resonates in New York. We all have somebody, yeah. like you said, male or female. So it really got me thinking about the power of oral tradition in our lives, kitchen table stories, and I wanted to sort of explore that with a group of people. And you're a writer? I am. Yeah. I am. I worked in corporate America for many years uh, in telecommunications writing. So. And, and so uh, d d d some of the uh, story you got what, five or, or, s or six? Six uh, close six. friends uh, that I've been friends with for 33 years. So we're all very different and I think if you'll see if you've read the book, it's, it's kind of extraordinary really the range of stories just between the seven of us going back one generation yeah, or, or two. two generations the experiences that our mothers and grandmothers have had and and you obviously best friends with these girls for a long long time mm -hmm. Th this was all these were all revelations right yeah that was one of the really extraordinary things also about the book was that i've been friends with them since we were 17 18 years old and I found out so much more about each friend. It was like going back in time with them and really getting to see who inspired them as a young girl or as a child. Do you believe it's important that this is uh, about women? I know the book isn't just for women, but do you believe that the, the, woman, the female aspect of this is, is an important uh, you know, mark of the book? I do. I mean, it's what the book is, is about. It's a very, very personal book for me. I mean, anyone who, who reads it will see that. I write about my mother and my grandmother mm -hmm. and my own memories. And, 
and just how important these friendships are to me. Um, you know, it's just it's just a very personal book to me. The mother of, of three uh, three great sons uh, yes. uh, writing this book. It is a great book. We're going to come back. We have a lot more to get to. Again, the name of the book is True and Constant Friends uh, by Kelly Paul. We'll talk more a little bit about maybe a, a guy named Rand Paul. I'm not so sure. And uh, also the uh, campaign ahead and the state of the world. Uh, who knows what we'll talk about. Kelly Paul's coming back. As you well know, there has been some criticism of you uh, and about your interaction with female interviewers, questioning whether you have an issue with women. Um, you said that you get equally annoyed with me men and women. I get that. That's probably true. I get that. But perception is reality sometimes in politics. So if you are the Republican nominee and you're on the stage with Hillary Clinton, a female opponent, you're going to have to pull your punches given the perception of you now? His answer was a great answer. His answer was no, because, you know, to say I'm going to treat her differently because she's a woman is, is sexist just as much as anything else. Joining us again, rejoining us, is Kelly Paul, who has that great book out, uh, True and Constant Friends. Uh, who, she's also the wife of Senator Rand Paul. So when you hear what's happened, and, and look, you have to expect it. I mean, I, I do show after show after show on this media bias, the double standard, you name it. They're going to go up to anybody and everybody who might be the nominee for president on the Republican side and give Hillary a waltzing pass. So uh, when you hear this, that your husband has a problem with women, how do you respond? You know, one thing people probably don't know about Rand is that his entire professional career is working with female surgeons. His partner, longtime partner, more than a decade in his ophthalmology practice was a female surgeon, extremely accomplished, prominent female surgeon. They had a fantastic partnership and working relationship together. Now she's one of his biggest political supporters and is a great friend. He also goes back to Kentucky now and does pro bono surgery with another female surgeon, um, eye surgeon in Paducah, who has her own surgery center. They also have a great relationship. So, I mean, I see that and think they don't really know Rand. Um, obviously, you know, he has a great relationship with And, and I'd hate to see it become, not that you're doing it yet and not that he's doing it yet, but I'd hate to see it become you know, some of my best friends are black kind of thing, right? you know, because because it's just so it's just so unfair. This criticism is 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 ridiculous. I mean, and and as his wife, who, who knows him intimately yeah. and better than anybody else, it, it's really got to it, does it anger you? Does it uh, do, I mean, do you want to lash out a little bit? I mean, you're, you're handling it very well. But inside when you see this and hear this and it's a constant drumbeat now, I mean, do, do, do you get angry? I try not to. It's way too early in the game to do that. <laughs> if I'm getting angry this soon, we're in trouble. That's true. Um, you know, I just try to keep my eye on the ball and know that we're going to hit a lot of bumps. And you know, we both have a lot to learn through this experience. And, so. and does he? Do, would, if you had advice to give him, or when you talk to him, I mean, do you do you say? I mean, because he's not a he doesn't he, he's not an overly emotional person in public. He's, he doesn't. I mean, he doesn't yell. He wasn't yelling at these people. He, whatever he does, he does in a calm, with a calm demeanor. Mm -hmm. So, would you say he has issues with patience or or any issue at all? Because he said he he's, he's taken male uh, interviewers and female interviewers mm -hmm. to task, which I don't have a problem with. But do you feel that going forward, he has to maybe tone it down or something? You know, in politics, I think you, there is sort of a learning curve in terms of how you present yourself. And it is sometimes difficult uh, for anyone, I think, when they feel like maybe their idea is being misrepresented and they're not getting Agreed. their message out. And so um, I'm sure that it's something that he'll get better at. I don't know. Um, I, I, I was telling Dana Bash, actually, in an interview I did with her, the more I do this, the more hard, I, I understand how hard it is, right. and so I'm probably a little easier on him. I mean, there have been times <laughs> he's come home and I've been like, why did you say that, or right, why didn't right. you say that? And now that I'm doing some of it, I realize it's really hard. Right, but you expected the media to be, a, 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 not a problem, but uh, the scrutiny of the media sure. as a Republican. Whereas, uh, do you believe that Hillary is treated different because she's a woman in, in a positive way by the media and by the public? or? I don't. I haven't really noticed that. I don't know that I really have an answer. Or because to that. she's a Democrat, as opposed to a Republican. <laughs> you Maybe. know, I, I don't think so. No. All right. Well, watch for the double standard. Okay. From this day forward, you watch. You jot down every time you say, "Wait a minute." 
you know, uh, uh, Senator Allen got knocked out of politics because he said the word macaca. Who knows what that is? Joe Biden has a history of racial remarks, and they say, oh, that guy, he's so funny, you know. Just watch for that. All so uh, right. it's, it's a fact of life, unfortunately, on the political trail. Pleasure meeting you. Great to meet and you, And say hello Steve. to your, your husband. We've talked many times when, when my hair was gray and, and dark. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for those wondering about what we saw there. And get the book. The book, here it is, True and Constant Friends. Very um, inspirational and, uh, and, and really um, just interesting tales of a great bunch of friends. We're coming back. Don't go away.